Hi everybody, welcome back to the SimHanger, my name's Mark and in this video we're going to be having a look at a brand new product from Turtle Beach. It's only recently been released and it's their Velocity 1 flight deck and it's their combo of both throttle and flight stick. Having now used the product off and on for the last week I feel I'm now in the position to give you my unbiased opinion and it's clearly evident it's been designed with space and flight simulation in mind. It arrives in a fairly large box and is suitably packaged. And a bit of a surprise as it's from Turtle Beach, it's PC only. Whilst the throttle and flight stick units are designed to work together, they can be used independently. The SOTAS system comes fully assembled, with the exception of the flight stick itself, which needs to be screwed onto the base. This is a pretty standard feature for products falling into this price category and provides an opportunity to the manufacturer to supply alternative bases or flight sticks, perhaps a smaller flight base that would fit onto a rig for example, as is the case with suppliers such as VKB, Verpal, Thrustmaster and so on. Each unit has a USB-C to USB-A connection to the PC. It is clearly designed for on-desk use with its fairly wide and sturdy base although you do have the option for screw mounting via the base. The joystick movement itself is smooth. It's made out of predominantly hardened plastic with a rubberized feel to the flight stick itself, similar to what you'd find on the Alpha Yoke, for example. The height of the flight stick can be extended to accommodate larger hands. So, how many buttons do you need? Well, the flight stick in this instance has been overly generous. That's the gear lever, I must say the moulding of the stick has been done very nicely, it's got a nice feel to it, very comfortable. Has a pinky lever, which interestingly is an axis with a button at the end. There's a multitude of POV and hat switches, another button here on the stem. And at the head of the unit it has an LED display, it's obviously not plugged in at the moment. And what's shown there can be configurable and we'll be having a look at that a little later on. But this flight stick has not only been generous in terms of buttons, but axes as well. This POV here, well that's two axes, as is a small notched wheel in the centre of the column. Could be ideal for trim or something of that nature. On the base of the flight stick there are a number of buttons. These ones here, the two end ones are simple toggle buttons. But the one in the centre is a three stage switch which could become very handy for something like gear in an airliner. What I don't like, however, is there's quite a bit of play on the head on two out of the three switches. They haven't come loose, but they do twist slightly. I find that a little disappointing. The rest of the buttons are fairly standard fare, and with many of them you can configure various lights. And it also has an audio jack. There's also a three position dial, these are effectively button presses and functions very much the same as the three-way position switch we looked at just now. You'll need to pay attention when configuring the trigger as it has a separate button press at the beginning and end of its travel. The throttle unit comes with an equally sturdy base and once again designed for desktop use. As you move the throttle there's a nice friction feedback. It's certainly not loose. As is often the case with units like this, the throttle can be split by depressing the button at the end and you now have separate throttles. This unit has been equally generous in terms of buttons and axes. This one I particularly like, this is an axis. So once again could be used for something like trim, perfect, with a button in the centre. It has various hat switches both on the side and in the front of the throttle itself. Well, no doubt it's fantastic having all the buttons, switches and axes. The only challenge is to remember what's what once it's configured. One thing I should mention is the throttle itself does have haptic feedback, which is very useful, particularly if in VR. And this is something I haven't seen before. Depending on what configuration you opt for, this is either a dual rotary switch, basically buttons, or the lower rotary can become an axis itself. That could come in very handy for those difficult configs. The configuration options don't end there. It also features a flight touch display with a number of default profiles such as jet, airliner, space sim and so on. And once again we'll look at that a little further on. 
In assessing a joystick, it's not just about features, but also very much about feel. And I like to judge by joysticks compared to Thrustmaster's Hotas Warthog, joystick that's been in the market for many, many years and regarded as the gold standard. The flight deck unit has a nice feel to it, even tension all the way, doesn't require quite as much tension as the Thrustmaster Warthog does, but the Warthog unit definitely has more travel through the axis, or more throw if you like, arguably providing greater precision. Both are good and will come down to individual preference really. The other joystick offering from Turtle Beach, the Flight Stick, has a reputation for being fairly firm, and if not fastened down, can tilt on a tabletop for example. The Flight Deck is far superior in feel to the Flight Stick. On this occasion it looks like Turtle Beach have got that tension just about right. If at any stage you do decide to buy this unit from Turtle Beach, after spending a short period on their website, you should see this pop-up offering you a 10% discount, reducing the price to £342. If you don't see the pop-up, add the product to your basket, but don't complete the purchase. And after a short period, you should get an email from Turtle Beach offering you the 10%. Enter the code and save yourself a reasonable amount of money. This makes the stick and throttle unit about £100 cheaper than the Thrustmaster Warthog offering, which in my opinion is just about right and where it should be. To get up and running you need to install the Velocity 1 flight hanger. Follow the links in the documentation provided or you can download it direct from the Windows Store. This will allow you to configure and update your flight deck. And the first thing you'll need to do is check for firmware updates for both the flight stick and the throttle itself. And I recommend you update the firmware before doing anything else. If you don't, some of the functions will act erratically. In my case, both units required a firmware update. Select the firmware tab and then update. Each firmware update takes a couple of minutes, but unlike some of other Turtle Beach's update applications for various peripherals, this one operated flawlessly. And of course you should come back here occasionally perhaps once a month or once every two months and check for future firmware updates as expanded functionality is added. Updates are now complete and we've returned to the home screen. We're now going to have a look at different configuration options and the amazing versatility and flexibility therein. There's very little you can't do or configure. But before doing so, there's something very important you must understand. The profiles and configurations that you create here affect the look and the function of various dials, switches and so on. And as we'll demonstrate it will allow you to configure the flight touch display on the throttle unit and determine how many different buttons, switches and dials you want to have on that display. But here's the important point. It does not transfer that configuration to the simulator that you're using. Once in SIM, you'll have to change any of the default configurations to suit if necessary, or create your own. Now in the case of Microsoft Flight Simulator, for example, there are a number of default configurations, but they're not available in the SIM right now. They obviously missed the last SIM update, so I can only assume they'll make the next SIM update, which is mid to late March. The flight stick and throttle quadrant are individually selectable from the menu on the left hand side. We're going to start off with a flight stick and have a look at that. And what I recommend is you go to the hardware test first and foremost to check that everything is working and functional. This is also the easiest place for you to discover what is an axis, what is a button and so on. One thing I expected to see for a unit costing this sort of price was a high degree of accuracy in terms of the movement and no chatter at all. And I'm pleased to say, in this instance, that is exactly the experience I had. And for pitch, roll and yaw, it's using non-contact Hall Effect sensors. I did mention it briefly before, but if you have a look at the trigger, when you first depress the trigger, it activates one button, and when the trigger's all the way in, it activates another button. This could be problematic for various configurations and something to bear in mind. Here I'm rotating the dial on the stem of the stick and you can see, yes, it's an axis. But it also functions as a button if you press it in. 
And likewise, we can do a hardware test on the throttle. Simply select it from the menu. And here you can play and experiment to your heart's content. I must say I really enjoy the friction or tension on the throttle axis itself. Firm enough to be noticeable, but not firm enough to tilt the unit. Also interesting to note that it's activating a number of buttons at both extremities of its axes, and also a center position. This could be very useful for fixing various positions on your throttle, such as maximum continuous thrust, etc. I mentioned earlier that the dial on the side of the throttle was an axis. Let's just test that. And yes, we can see that that's moving. That's going to be very useful indeed. Again, you could use that as a trim or perhaps for heading or whatever you wanted. You can also test the touchscreen panel on the throttle unit to check that the rotary dials, buttons and switches are functioning as expected. Now that you've got familiar with the units, it's now time to have a look at config options. Once again, we'll start with the flight stick and select config from the top tab. And here we can see there's four default profiles. Basic, fighter jet, space and commercial jet. To select one, put your mouse over the profile that's desired. And in the bottom right hand corner is a copy icon. Click on that and that profile will appear. A single click on the profile now will sync the flight stick to that profile. You can't hear it, but the actual unit itself vibrated. You can have more than one profile at any one time, but only one of those would be active. Now selected commercial and made that the active profile. You can see on the flight stick the LCD display has changed and so has the colors. I'll go back now and select fighter jet, make that the active, and once again the LCD display changes. You can delete a profile just by selecting the trash can. To enter the submenus, you can double click on the icon or select the edit icon from the bottom. And this is where you'll see the huge array and expanse of different configuration options available. This is a brief overview. We can select the panel editor. And if we wanted to, we could just change this aspect of the configuration. Options include space and commercial. I think I'm going to go for commercial. I quite like the look of that display. Let's see what else we've got under hardware settings. There's a vast array. You can select different profiles for the axis itself. In effect, it's the different sensitivities. You can also adjust or add dead zones if you wanted to, to any axis. You can also enable or disable the trackpad. That's done on the flight stick directly. Simply click this button up and it becomes a trackpad. Push it back down and it remains as a button. Options include audio. The thumb wheel, which we have already established is an axis, but you can change it from analog to digital. For Microsoft Flight Simulator, I recommend leaving it as analog. You can also adjust the haptics within the flight stick itself by changing the deflection boundaries. Once you've made all your changes, they're not saved at this point. To save it, head back to the home screen and click on the icon and that will save it. Note the LCD display on the flight stick has changed to reflect the commercial. If you wanted to create a profile from scratch, select New. Now on to the throttle unit. I'm going to select the fighter jet again. Click on it to make it active and it automatically syncs to the throttle. That's quite a nice touch. Once again, we can explore the configuration. Select the edit icon. Here it shows we've got three different pages in this particular profile. And under hardware, we can adjust the throttle profile, dead zones, whether or not you want haptic feedback, I think it's off by default. And you can also adjust the various positioning for the activation of the buttons and so on. Same applies to the rear wheel or trim wheel on the face of the throttle unit. And once again, you can leave it as analog or change it to digital. Under the hardware setting and dials function, this really highlights how versatile this unit is. And again, you can choose the bottom rotary as an analog axis and determine the number of clicks per input required for the various buttons and so on. And lastly, before we move on, let's just have a look at the digital touch panel. 
In this configuration, it's already got three different panels configured, and we can select these on the throttle unit itself simply by selecting the left and right arrows. There's one other page available, not sure how well this will come out on the video, and from here you can access different configuration options such as lighting, enabling or disabling haptics, and the list goes on and on. But you're not stuck just with these pre-configured panel layouts. You can, if you want, design your own. And we'll have a look at that momentarily. Just selected the lighting tab and here you can see you can chop and change different lights. You can vary the intensity and have just about any variant that you want. But of course you don't have to do any of this at all and just use it in its default state. The choice is purely yours whether you want to take advantage of all the various functions. The one thing that is worth looking at quickly is the panel editor for the flight touch display. And here you can mix and match anything that you want. Perhaps you want more buttons or you want more dials. Well, it works on a very simple drag and drop principle. Drag it out to get rid of it and select an icon from the menu options on the right hand side. Drag them in. You'll note many of the buttons and switches just have a generic name. You can change the text to suit exactly what you want and so that you can remember what the various switches and dials do. Note it hasn't changed on the throttle quadrant physically yet because we haven't saved it. Here's a closer look at the touch panel. You can scroll to different pages. The maximum number of pages is three. The fourth page is settings. And let's briefly have a look at key bindings. And what this shows you are the configuration assignments for your dials, buttons and switches. You can then in principle within your SIM assign functions to these. However, as far as I'm able to ascertain, this is not supported in Microsoft Flight Simulator at this time until the update. And in SIM, it'll often say it's trying to assign a function to a different device. Hopefully the update will sort this. So let's head back to the main menu. And then we need to click on the profile that we've selected, which is Fighter Jet at the top. That will then update all the information and the flight touch display will be updated accordingly. There we are done and updated. And you can see that reflected on the physical unit. If you don't like it, well, no problem. Just bin it. Select a new fighter jet profile. Click on it to update it once again. And you'll be back to where you started with the default display. We'll shortly be jumping into SIM to give it a test. But before we do so, if you're stuck on something, head over to Turtle Beach Support homepage. Links in the notes below. Select Controllers and Simulation. Look for the Velocity 1 flight deck. And here you'll find a variety of information, including a number of step-by-step -step guides. Here you'll be able to see the default button mappings and associated information. But I also wanted to make you aware of one of the points I can't demonstrate currently. And it's listed under the frequently asked questions. Currently available for Windows and Android mobile devices, but not available yet for iOS. There is a mobile app. And what's the significance of that? Well, it will allow you to move buttons, switches and dials to your mobile or tablet. And these will interact directly with the device. This option may be easier to manage rather than trying to deal with the touch display itself. We've now jumped into SIM and let's go to the Control Options menu. Both the throttle and the stick show a default configuration, however that configuration is empty. In effect, and as mentioned earlier, until the next SIM update, or whenever it's updated, you'll have to create your own configuration from scratch, something that I've done for this video. I'm not going to run through my config in any detail, just highlight one or two points. If, however, they're not available by the next SIM update, of course, I will do a number of configuration guides. Setting up the configuration was fairly straightforward and standard, very much along the lines as you would configure for any other aircraft using an alternative joystick or throttle quadrant. If, however, you'd like to see some simplified configs, drop a comment and if there's enough demand, I'll do it earlier. That trim wheel I was so enthused about 
While I wasn't able to configure it adequately, so set elevator and rudder trim to the POV, which worked very well. My braking configuration may be of interest. I used the pinky lever at the base of the stick and configured both brakes access to it. I also had to configure the button at the end of the travel. This gives me progressive braking, which is great, but not differential braking. Configuring the autopilot was fairly straightforward, as was the gear up and down. Turning now to the throttle quadrant, I allocated various functions to this, including autopilot, and set nose wheel steering limits so I could steer using my rudders in the F-18. Obviously, I configured both throttles. I configured them separately. I configured flaps to one of the forward POVs on the throttle quadrant. In the config, I noted that flight idle was where it was marked on the actual quadrant and not pulled all the way back. I could, of course, change this earlier in the setup. Anyway, let's jump back into the F-18 and we can see some of this function in practice and we'll take it for a quick flight. And as shown earlier, you could have changed the lighting configuration and display panel to suit. Now exercising the flap lever, I have flaps up and down. It's a flaps decrease and increase so I can set them in stages. And for my carrier landings, I set the tail hook to the button on the end of the throttle here, which incidentally is also an analog axis. I also allocated the spoilers to the lever here, this axis worked very well and provided graduated control on the spoiler. The flight stick obviously has a twist action, so I have rudders, elevator and aileron as you would expect. Interestingly, all my dead zones are set at 0% as the Hall effect sensors doing their job. Again, as mentioned earlier, the touch screen itself does not seem to be active. You can identify the inputs, allocate them, but they don't show and they don't save. Here's an anomaly I noted on the pito heat. In my config, I deliberately haven't set this, but pito heat is one of the switches on the touch display, and with multiple taps, I could get that to action. So there's obviously something in the background there, but I wasn't able to resolve what it is. As you saw earlier, I set up camera views and a button on the stick to switch to external view when required, and also to reset my view. I used the three-way button dial at the top of the stick and I used this to set my parking brakes on and off. Two ons and one off, as it's a three-way switch. I'm just above flight idle and the aircraft is creeping forward and applying brakes as we move forward using the pinky lever and because it's an axis I can graduate that brakes or pull it all the way into the button and apply full brakes. As we're gaining speed, you'll note that I can't steer. Once again, I've set a button for the steering limit, press the button, and I now have steering. That config, by the way, is something particular to the F-18. Throttles to max. Let's get up in the air. And as we're speeding down the runway, great opportunity for us to check if our afterburners are working, which they are. And I've used the big red fire button on the throttle unit. It's quite awkward to film this sort of thing. I'm leaning over at an angle, so please bear with me. But we're up and away. Flaps to auto and gear up. Come back on the throttle after burn is off. The flight stick itself is giving me a feeling of control. Tension's not too harsh. Pulling back very slightly on the stick and comfort in the hand to boot. I do like the flight stick. Here I'm just rolling left and right slightly. But the flight stick is providing graduated control, yet can be twitchy and react fast when I need it to, even though for aileron and roll, I have turned down the sensitivities. But this again was a personal preference of mine. I mentioned earlier I set the elevator trim to the POV button on the flight stick itself, and I must highlight it worked really well. Small increments, not over the top, might be different with other aircraft, but with the F-18, well, it's a star performer. I found the throttle quadrant very responsive. I enjoy the friction and, once again, fairly comfortable in hand, although perhaps wouldn't suit a small child or something like that, as there is a fair amount of friction involved. 
but it's not over the top in my opinion. I'm not going to bore you with the whole flight. What's mainly important is what sort of level of control do you feel you have with this unit and I think overall it's very good indeed. If anything I'd probably have liked a little bit of more throw or movement along the elevator and uh, aileron axis but again that's a personal opinion and I've probably been spoiled by other joysticks over the years. The proof of the pudding is in the eating as they say so let's go for a landing. Flaps are down, gear are down, speed below 200 knots and we're now on final approach. Well, I felt totally in control on that approach and both the flight stick and throttle operated exactly as I expected it to. Both were responsive to the small inputs required for a landing. Now applying my brakes, let's just have a look at that from an external point of view. And here I'm just experimenting with some graduated brakes and then full brakes. Having the brakes on the pinky lever, I must say, really does work very well. This is the first time I've tried it there. As we come off the runway, let me share my final thoughts and opinions with you. Well, it's not inexpensive, but it is an all-in-one solution. It is the most configurable HOTAS system available in the market as far as I'm aware. So much so that for average simming, well, you're unlikely to use most of them. And I am at this point taking it as a given that Microsoft Flight Simulator will get default profiles. Compared to other feature-rich HOTAS systems, it's competitively priced. Quality-wise, it seems fit for purpose, but only time will tell how it will stand up to the rigours of daily use. Make no mistake, it's not Verpal quality, but it's also not a Verpal price. The fact that it's not Xbox compatible is a miss in my book, and from what I can see from the unit, it's right-hand only, and in its more advanced uses, well, it's more complex perhaps than it needs to be. But it's easy to focus just on the negatives. This unit has a lot going for it. Overall, it's a good unit, and I'll certainly be using it. And kudos to Turtle Beach for their innovation here. Technology-wise, well, they've just leapt ahead of most of the competition. Well done, Turtle Beach. As always, thank you very much for joining me today. I hope you found it useful and informative. Stay well, look after yourselves. I'll see you all again in the not-too-distant future, and ciao for now.